Consumers today can choose from an almost unlimited variety of poultry meat and egg products. These products are abundant, nutritious, safe, and very affordable. Decades of scientific research have enabled the poultry industry to implement practices which allow the birds to thrive in a productive and comfortable environment. Consumers today are very curious about how their food is produced and want to know more about specific issues. One topic discussed often today is antibiotic use. U.S. Poultry has invited two noted experts to help us understand the use of antibiotics in the poultry industry. Dr. Randy Singer and Dr. Chuck Hoffaker will answer questions concerning current and future use of antibiotics in poultry. Hi, my name is Randy Singer. I'm an Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the University of Minnesota. I'm a veterinarian and I have my PhD in Epidemiology. The focus of my research program for the last 15 years has been really around foodborne pathogens and antimicrobial resistance and how to minimize risks to the animal populations, to the human populations, as well as in the environment. When I teach courses in infectious disease epidemiology to grad graduate students in veterinary medicine and in public health, we focus extensively on how we can create programs to reduce these disease risks to the animal populations and human populations. What we're going to talk about today with respect to antibiotic use. Antibiotics are a key part of a program to maintain the health of these animal populations. They have their potential risks, antibiotic resistance. And so what we're going to discuss today is how we try to minimize those risks from resistance developing in bacteria that affect the animals as well as the bacteria that can be spread to people through food. Hi, I'm Chuck Hoffaker. I'm a veterinarian and I've specialized in poultry medicine for the last 30 years. I'm a professor at the University of Georgia and I teach veterinarians the specialty of, of poultry veterinary medicine. Today we're going to visit this farm and talk about antibiotic use and antibiotic resistance in the poultry industry. One of the major tools that a poultry veterinarian and the poultry industry uses in the, their fight against diseases is to prevent the disease to come onto the farm in the first place. So before we go onto this farm and talk about antibiotic resistance and antibiotic use, we'll be putting on boots and coveralls and a hairnet so that we don't bring any diseases onto this farm. Why are antibiotics given to poultry? Maintaining the health of a population of chickens like this is no simple task. This is a complex living organism that really is treated as a single unit, this approach in population medicine. Antibiotics are a critical component of our toolbox on how to keep this population healthy. But they are definitely not the only or even the primary tool in our toolbox. Whether it's the veterinarian, the, uh, the manager of this farm, the people who work on the farm, everyone is aware of the health status of this flock of chickens and will incorporate a whole variety of interventions to keep this population healthy, from vaccination protocols to management strategies, rodent control, vector control, a whole variety of ways in which we work to maintain the health of this population. But we know, just like any living organism, that they can get sick. So we are going to use those antibiotics to maintain the health, preventing them from getting sick in the first place, or should disease appear, that we can quickly respond with the appropriate antibiotic in order to eliminate that disease from sped spreading rapidly through this population. Well, to understand why we use antibiotics in poultry, we have to understand that a large portion of what we do as poultry veterinarians is prevent disease. And the poultry producers, that's, that's their goal, is to prevent disease. So if we look at this house of chickens, there's 25,000 chickens in this house. It's very similar to a city of 25,000 people. This farm is owned by a family farmer. He, he runs this farm, and it's his family's business. To be successful, he's going to have to do a good job in the husbandry or the animal care. So the environment inside of these houses is very, very good. The, the chickens don't have to worry about a, a hawk flying over and attacking them or a fox coming and getting them. They're in a, in a safe, 
clean environment where they have food and water whenever they want to eat, whenever they want to drink. The air is, is fresh and clean. So the environment is actually much better than it would be if they were in, in the old days outdoors. Uh, 30 years ago when I started as a veterinarian, there were still a lot of turkeys that were raised outside. And those turkeys had a lot more diseases and got sick a lot more that were outside than the turkeys that are raised indoors. And that's the reason that there's not much turkey raising that's outdoors any longer in the United States. How are antibiotics provided to poultry? When a flock of chickens become sick or individuals within the flock become sick, uh, it, we can't chase around trying to catch that one individual or those individuals that are sick. In fact, that would cause more stress. One of the things we know, just as with us, when you are sick, you don't want to eat, but you'll continue to drink water or continue to drink. And the chicken is no different than us. When they're sick, they don't want to eat, but they will drink. So when we have a flock and there's a lot of sick chickens in that flock, the quickest way to get an antibiotic to them is to put it into their water. And we do that through a system that proportions that water out uniformly through all of these water lines so that every drink, every drop has the, the correct amount of antibiotic. Once the flock begins to feel better, it's then much better to give them that antibiotic in their feed. And when they do that and begin to eat, we'll be able to put antibiotic into the feed. In animal agriculture, to raise a healthy food supply, we need to maintain the health of the herd or the flock. In a house such as this, where you've got 25,000 birds, we can't think of the individual as being the end point of health. It is all about maintaining a healthy population. And so in medicine, we often call this population medicine, where we're not focused on the individual animal, we're focused on the group. In a house such as this, should disease appear, you can see how fast it could potentially spread throughout this house due to the amount of contact that the individuals are having with each other. And because of that, we need to be able to use an antibiotic quickly that will treat this entire flock in order to prevent the spread of this disease. And because of that, then there's several ways in which antibiotics do get used in a population. And these follow the approved labels from the FDA. One is obviously going to be disease treatment where you're treating the sick individual. The second would be disease control where an individual could be exposed but yet not showing clinical signs. A third would be the disease prevention label where um, you are trying to prevent the disease from spreading perhaps to another house on the farm. But the key is that all of these uses of antibiotics help maintain the health of this population of animals. How is the decision made to treat with antibiotics? A chicken will show uh, quite a few different signs if they have become sick. Uh, for example, they'll, they'll be swelling around their eyes or there may be a, a nasal discharge uh, or they'll have a cough. And whenever they do get sick, then the, the farmer who has been uh, trained to look for those different signs will then call the producer and his flock supervisor who is a, a person that comes to the farm uh, several times every week will then come and look at the birds. So when a flock of chickens is sick, a veterinarian or a representative of the poultry producer uh, who's called a flock supervisor will go to the farm, examine the birds, and if necessary, um, if an animal has died, then they'll do a, a, a necropsy, which is an animal autopsy. And at that autopsy, that necropsy, they may take a sample and take a, a swab culture of the affected area so that we know what bacteria is causing the disease. Uh, we know that by doing that, we can specifically hone in on the correct antibiotic for that infection in that flock of chickens. So we bring the swab back to the laboratory. 
and we'll streak that swab on this auger plate and in each of these discs is impregnated with an antibiotic at the, the approved use level. And if the bacteria that's causing the infection in the chickens is susceptible to that antibiotic, it'll create this zone of inhibition or it'll keep the bacteria from growing in that area where the antibiotic is permeating out into the auger. And that's how we know which antibiotic to choose that's the most appropriate for preventing uh, any further disease. All of the antibiotics approved for use in the United States require information on the length of time that you can use that antibiotic and then you have to stop before the birds can go to the processing plant. And that's called the withdrawal time. That's the length of time so that we don't have any antibiotic residue in the meat. So when you buy chicken in the grocery store, you can be assured that there is no antibiotic in that meat, even if there might have been an illness in that flock. How does antibiotic use in poultry affect antibiotic resistance in foodborne pathogens? There is often a misconception that eliminating antibiotic uses will eliminate antibiotic resistance. And for many reasons, this is completely untrue. Antibiotic resistance has been around for eons. It exists independently of anything that humans have done, for instance, creating antibiotics. It occurs naturally in the environment. The addition of antibiotics produced by humans and then used in medicine, both veterinary medicine and human health, has resulted perhaps in a greater diversity of resistance and higher levels of it but simply taking the antibiotic away will not eliminate resistance. There are many factors other than antibiotics that have the potential to select for these bacterial populations that are resistant to the antibiotics. Some poultry flocks are raised without the use of antibiotics. If any of these flocks get sick, are they treated with antibiotics? We do know that about 20% of the flocks that are placed for antibiotic free will have an intestinal disease. Those birds are treated with an antibiotic to stop the disease and to help them feel better. In those situations, the poultry company then must, by law, um, market those chickens in the traditional um, market. They can't go into the antibiotic free market once they've been treated with an antibiotic. What is the difference in medically important and non-medically important antibiotics? The term medically important or critically important when referring to an antibiotic, it's a commonly used term, but often a misunderstood term. When we talk about medically important, what we're trying to do is categorize antibiotics into their importance to human health. So organizations such as the World Health Organization, or the Food and Drug Administration have tried to categorize these antibiotics that are used in animals based on their importance to treating severe illness in humans. This categorization scheme is intended to try to restrict uses of those antibiotics that are critically important for application in animal populations. What we would like to see then is that most of the antibiotics being used in animal agriculture are those that would not be as critical as medically important to human health. The challenge becomes when we try to initiate a policy or a plan for treating disease. Often the antibiotics that are most effective at treating disease, whether they be in animals or in humans, are those compounds, those antibiotics that we would call medically important. Now in the United States, we use a science-based approach to decide on which antibiotics to approve and what those risks might be to human health. For example, in 2006, the Food and Drug Administration, Center for Veterinary Medicine, withdrew an approved drug for use in poultry, a class known as the fluoroquinolones. The human analog in that class would be ciprofloxacin, commonly referred to as Cipro. Now that move was made because of the perceived risk that the use of fluoroquinolones in poultry could have on the development of resistance against this critically important drug. That has left the poultry industry with very few options of drugs that are highly effective against serious disease. 
So as we decide which antibiotics are medically important or critically important, we tend to move then towards the use of certain compounds in animal agriculture that have absolutely no relationship to antibiotics used in human medicine. For instance, a compound that would be commonly used in animal agriculture is known as the ionophore. This is meant to control coccidia in the animal intestine. <clears throat> Over one-third of the total antibiotic used in raising chickens, for example, is going to be made up of this ionophore, which has actually no counterpart in human medicine. So if we were to focus strictly on the amounts of antibiotics that are being used, this is a very misleading metric because of the fact that many of the antibiotics that we would choose to use in animal agriculture have no counterpart in human medicine. What are the future changes for antibiotic usage in poultry production? As poultry veterinarians, we, we don't have very many antibiotics in the United States that we can choose from to treat bacterial infections in chickens and turkeys. And so if we lose any of those antibiotics in our uh, arsenal, then that puts us under um, more pressure to use therapeutic antibiotics. In Europe, when they removed the, the growth promoting antibiotics and banned their use, that resulted in a greater use of therapeutic antibiotics. And the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, knows that occurred in Europe. And so they have very wisely chosen to s slowly change and remove those labels for growth promoting antibiotics over a three year period of time. So in, in three to four years, the growth promotants will be gone, but the use as continuous use in the feed for prevention of intestinal disease will be gone. And in its place will be a, a system that's called the Veterinary Feed Directive, or VFD. That's where a veterinarian will, will write a prescription um, called a VFD, and the, the producer company can then add the antibiotic into the feed at a particular dosage for a particular period of time. That will result in a greater amount of veterinary oversight and veterinary involvement in the use of antibiotics in feed in the United States. In closing, We've explored how antibiotics are used in poultry production, some of the decision-making process involved with selecting the appropriate antibiotic, and some of the challenges we face going forward in poultry production, especially as antibiotic usage practices change. I hope this presentation was useful, and if you have any further questions on this topic, please contact the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. Thank you. This video was brought to you by U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. Funding for this video was provided by the International Poultry Expo. Please support our exhibitors.